when I was um, when I was younger and doing a gap year. I spent time in Africa building a toilet. Locals were looking yeah. on at us, yeah. uh, you know, a bunch <laughs> of sort of uh, 10 young guys from the UK who have no idea how to make toilets. Oh, okay. um, and they were looking at us thinking, well, well, why are you here? Who's going to use this toilet in the middle of nowhere? And most importantly, there was no one from the local population which was really engaged in helping us. They weren't connected right. to this. It, was, it felt at the time like it was a bit of a waste of time. You are listening to In Good Company, a podcast that explores the lives, businesses, careers, and advocacies of people who want to create positive impact in the world. If you're someone who's looking for inspiration, positive stories, how-tos, and opportunities to start a business or pursue a career with meaning and purpose, this podcast is for you. And we won't just be talking about the good and inspiring stuff. We'll be talking about the real stuff, which means that we'll get into the gritty, grimy, and yes, juicy details about trying to do good in a world where doing good is still a bit of an afterthought. This podcast is designed to share inspiring stories, but at the same time encourage anyone. But while doing good in a big way is challenging, it is possible, and there are concrete and actionable steps to do so. So if you want to do good, you're in good company. I'm Rhys Fernandez-Ruiz, co-founder and president of Rags to Riches. And I'm Tom Graham, author of the book, The Genius of the Poor, and co-founder of a social tourism enterprise, Make a Difference Travel. And And this this is is In Good Good Company. Company. Lots of people save up for travel now more than they save up for stuff. And that's awesome, right? Because experiences last forever. But what if you can travel and do good at the same time? What if you can do more than just bring memories with you and in fact, leave memories for others to remember as well? All the better, of course, if you create positive impact in every place you go to. This is the advocacy of Mad Travel or Make a Difference Travel, adventures that matter. So today, I don't have a co-host because I'll be interviewing him. Tom Graham, a public speaker, author of Genius of the Poor, and co-founder of Make a Difference Travel. This is his story. So what is your story, Tom? The subtitle of your book is An Englishman's Journey in the Philippines. Can you share a bit more about that? All right. Well, I arrived in this country about five years ago. Uh, I was basically a a white guy wearing a shirt and a tie. No way. (laughs) Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm looking um, a little bit out of out of place. And I was a business journalist. So I was interviewing politicians and CEOs and going uh, basically walking around the the central business district Mm -hmm. of Makati. And I was expected to stay in this country just a couple of months. And then just before I was about to leave, I interviewed uh, the founder of Gawad Kalinga, Tony Maloto. And that interview really changed my life because um, he urged me to ditch the shirt and the tie (laughs) and to go out and discover the genius of the Filipino poor. I was kind of confused at the time as to what that meant. Somehow I was inspired by by his vision of the Philippines and by all of these people that seemed to be living out his vision in their own particular way. So I met people uh, similar age to me who maybe were earning less money at the time, but they were social entrepreneurs and they seemed to have such purpose about everything they did. And I got super inspired. So I ended up quitting my job and telling my parents, I'm not coming back home to the UK anytime soon. (laughs) And I spent one year visiting the communities of Gaud Kalinga to discover what Tony described as the genius um, of the Filipino poor. So I wrote a book, The Genius of the Poor, and I got so hooked on this country and on the people and the, the warmth of the people here that I've since decided that I won't be going back to the UK anytime soon. So that's why I set up um, my uh, social enterprise, uh, Mad Travel. Wow, what a, what a journey. <laughs> and you came from such a faraway place, which I love, by the way. For me, that's kind of, well, a little bit scary and very inspiring because you got inspired by Tito Tony Melotto. But at the same time, you're talking about, in your book, Genius of the Poor. A lot of people, like, I don't think it's just the Philippines, but anywhere in the world, have this misconception about the poor and saying that, okay... Um, when you work with poor people or people who are in poverty, they will be very different from you. And they have misconceptions on why poverty is a thing and poverty is there. But at the same time, I think a lot of people also romanticize it. So I just am interested about what your learnings are when creating this book. 
because I assume that this kind of inspired you to get to where you are now. Right. Yeah. When, when Tony first said the genius of the poor, I thought, what is he talking about? Right? How can there be genius in the poor yeah. if they're poor? Yeah. Didn't make sense. But one of the very first people I met on my journey, it was in a community called um, Silver Heights. There was a guy there called Benji. He's exactly the same age as me, born in the same month of the same year, which I will not reveal. Um, <laughs> it's okay. We'll put that in the bio. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> and I just got talking to him. And I just learned, I, I listened to his story and I was amazed because uh, this guy, Benji, he came from Mindanao. He was abused by his father at the age of sort of 11, 12, uh, being a scavenger, providing for his family. He was still abused by his father and he, and he escaped home, he escaped Mindanao at this really young age. And he came to Manila, you know, the city of the bright lights where he really wanted to future for himself. I think he was 13 when he arrived what? here in Manila. And um, this guy, Benji, he... He had no money, he had no family here, and he was living on the streets for a few years. And he eventually got work in a construction site, and he was, you know, eating the, the bone thing from the trash can outside yeah. Kentucky Fried Chicken, stuff like yeah. that. And this really got me thinking, because I thought, at that age of 13, Benji was surviving on the streets of Manila. What was I doing? My biggest concern in life was you know, my Premier League football team, mm -hmm. my homework, and maybe some crush I had on a girl, which was not reciprocated, would you believe it? And- <laughs> Of course not, I don't, I don't believe it at all. And this was like a disaster for me. I was like, oh my yeah. goodness, my life's gonna end because somebody doesn't like me, something like that. that they were my concerns in life. And yet Benji was surviving on the streets on his own. And so I thought to myself, who really has more to teach the other in this relationship, in meeting someone like Benji? Yes, I may be more educated in an academic sense. Benji, and through his experience in life, had so much to teach me about how to live a better and a more caring life. And he had so many insights for me. And this was just one guy in one community. Yeah. Of course, I spent a year living in, in various different communities and there were, there were different lessons that came from every community I went to. So it was really amazing and there really is a genius there, I think, in Bayanihan spirit of, of, of these people. Yeah, it couldn't have been all the same though. There are lots of probably Benjis in the world who would yep. react differently to right. their situation for sure. But yeah. I think like, when you find some, a few, even just a few of these yeah. people. And it's also learning to empathize with, I mean, for me, uh, Benji is remarkable, but if I had gone through the same life situation as Benji, yeah. would I have been as heroic as, as, as he had been? Yeah. So Benji today is um, uh, living in, in a GK uh, village. He's built homes for really not just himself, but by, for um, other communities. He spent six months in, in areas affected by Typhoon Yolanda, mm. building homes for people who are affected there. This guy's amazing. Now, if I had gone through all of the crap that, that yeah. Benji <laughs> went through in life, would I end up as well-rounded and as kind a person as him? I, I don't think so. So, you know, it, it's taught me to be more empathetic also to those people that go through crap, but don't yeah. necessarily come out of it as well as, as Benji did, because it's kind of understandable in a way. That's a great insight. Because I think sometimes we expect a lot from other people based on how we would react to something, based on how our circumstances exactly. are. Yeah. But I think that's that's a good way of approaching things, approaching poverty, approaching how you can help out. And a good jump off point, because mm -hmm. I think when you travel, you meet a lot of people. And in Make a Difference Travel, you don't just meet tourists. You don't just meet people who usually meet tourists. Um, your Make a Difference Travel and you go for adventures that matter so it's different the empathy that's asked from you is different can you talk a little bit more about that yeah sure so mad travel what we well first of all we believe that tourism is a really powerful way or can be a really powerful tool for bringing people together getting people out of their comfort zones in an environment which is safe but also really inspiring and full of hope so we partner with different uh, Gaud Kalinga and non Gaud Kalinga communities mm -hmm. um, across the country. And we create inspiring um, events or experiences inside these communities. So well, what does an adventure that matter, just what does that really mean? This is really going beyond sense that you might have of charity work, yeah. of giving back, of CSR, mm -hmm. of doing something which make you feel a little bit better in yeah. the short term, but also perhaps make you appreciate how lucky you are. We want to go beyond that and we want to really 
inspire our guests yeah. that, you know, a truly sort of Walang Iwanan Philippines or a Philippines in which no one is left it's behind is yeah. really possible. And if we can create travel experiences which are super fun in the process and really a sharing of experiences, of skills, then we feel that tourism can play a far bigger role in creating positive change in, in the Philippines. So whether it means coming on one of our trips and learning about social enterprise or about how to become a social entrepreneur, whether it be going on one of our trips and contributing to planting a rainforest or learning about the Aita culture, for example, or in completely different backgrounds to which you're familiar with, or whether it be simply meeting your co-travellers, sort of travelers, uh, meeting people who are in a very similar, perhaps, situation in life yeah. to you, people that share your concerns and your passions. That's really what we want to do through Mad Travel, is bring people together so you really will have, yeah, as we say, that, that adventure that, that, that matters uh, beyond just the one or two days that they spend with us. Right. So volunteerism, because there are lots of people who talk about this, especially in the recent years. And for a lot of people, it's been getting a bad rap, of course. Mm. We, we know that. Um, some people just go to places and take pictures, and that's their profile picture, and suddenly yep, they're a yep. good person. Yep. So do you think that's fair? And what are the things that you're doing to sort of avoid the usual pitfalls of vol yeah. volunteerism? I think it's fair that there is some criticism out there of volunteerism yeah. um, itself. I, I just remember when I was um, when I was younger and doing a gap year, I spent time in Africa building a toilet. Locals were looking yeah. on at us, yeah. uh, you know, a bunch <laughs> of sort of uh, ten young guys from the UK who have no idea how to make toilets, oh, okay. um, and they were looking at us thinking, well, well, why are you here? Who's going to use this toilet in the middle of nowhere? And most importantly, there was no one from the local population which was really engaged in helping us. They weren't connected right. to this. It was, it felt at the time like it was a bit of a waste of time. So we're about a lot more than volunteering. Um, volunteering is a small component of our trips, but it's really more about sharing experiences and getting, getting inspired and learning. Mm -hmm. So going to the local community and learning about how they live or learning from their experiences and seeing how that can hopefully make you in one way or another um, a, better, um, a better person. It's, it, it certainly happens to me. So if you go to an Aita uh, community where we where we have different trips, you know, you'll see there's somebody in the community who's lived to over 100 years old, oh. and yet there's no, obviously there's no Mercury drugstore in, yeah. the, in, in the surrounding area, right? And so you learn from the community about what they eat, about the natural, uh, the herbal remedies they use, which keep them away from sickness. Or it could be learning from the community about how they, how they hunt or about how they are really driven. The community themselves are driven to build a rainforest. Right. So I think the key thing that we want to, I think that I would stress, which is most important for us, is that we work with communities where there's already a seed of hope has been planted. Mm. So this is not, uh, I've heard this term before, poverty porn, yeah. right? Where you show up and you see poverty, and you're like, oh my, you take a few photos. Oh, and I hate that. <laughs> exactly. And it's like, oh my goodness, I'm so glad that's not happening to me, poor right. folk. We yeah. want to say no. A Gaud Kalinga community is a beautiful place. There's beautiful mm -hmm. houses. There's amazing community spirit. And that is an environment where a lot of our guests, and we've, we've had various guests that have visited a GK community during the day. They had, that evening, they had a hotel booking in a hotel in Makati. Yeah. And they've said, Tom, cancel it. I want to stay here. I want to do a homestay in this community because they loved it that much. Wow. And it meant that much to them. Um, even though they were going to lose money, etc. Yeah. So this is what this is about building hope, right? And you can't do that if you're just showing people poverty and you're not showing them a solution. Right. So, so you you showed us like how it looks like to be like a person going to a community, being part of the community. That's like you could see that in your photos. Um, people are very happy, are very inspired, are very hopeful. But I want to know also as an entrepreneur, take us behind the scenes in the places in the offices where no one gets to see like mm. what are the challenges what are the difficulties how how does a day look like because i'm sure the weekends and the trips are amazing yeah. but behind yeah. the scenes it's yeah. pretty interesting too oh yeah for sure <laughs> uh, interesting fun and quite frustrating at times as oh, well yeah. of course <laughs> as as you would know our brand of tourism is all about working with communities right so that's a lot more challenging than let's say um, we just built a partnership with a travel operator in, uh, in, in I don't know, Boracay or wherever. 
and we're just going to send you to a nice hotel in Boracay or in yeah. Palawan. And that's basically our job done. As long as the hotel is nice and in good condition, right. and uh, our guests are going to be happy. Um, but we're working with uh, people and with communities, and we're developing those communities to become destinations for tourism when the people living in the community may have no previous experience of meeting foreigners or meeting outsiders even, mm -hmm. because a lot of our guests are, are Filipino as well. Yeah. So there's a lot of relationship building which goes on there, and there's a lot of training. You know, we, it still happens on a regular basis. So, so my, my business partner, Raf, has, has been spending the last two to three years visiting every month and often several times a month. One of the, the tribes that we work with in Sambales, a, a couple of months ago, he came back to me and he said, Tom, it might be over. Like they've, they've said they're not happy with something. And they what? and just, just because there was a miscommunication, yeah. I, I think that trust has been broken down and has been worn away over you know, generations and generations. Oh, yeah. And so the role of a social entrepreneur, you're kind of a middleman and you're trying mm -hmm. to connect the mainstream or the middle classes with, with what is, um, you know, with, with communities that have been left behind. Yeah. And that role as the middleman is really tough because you're trying to create something which is going to be acceptable mm -hmm. to your market, which could be our tourists, for example. Yeah. So that the experience has to be clean and it has to be fun and exciting. But at the same time, you're coming alongside a community which has been, until you arrive there, has very little trust of, of people coming from the outside or coming from, from different backgrounds. So there's all kinds of misunderstandings mm -hmm. and, and it really, you just have to spend time in the community. Yeah. So fortunately with MAD, we have quite a big team and we make sure that we have several people in our team already who are, who are in the communities on a daily basis and building up those real, and that real respect, mutual respect, yeah. the basis for all of the experiences that we that we create from from, from there on mm -hmm. so that's a lot of the work is spending yeah. time in the communities but then of course the other side of it which is the side that i'm particularly engaged in is building partnerships so connecting the potential for social tourism to people in manila or across the world mm -hmm. who might be interested in uh, quote unquote going mad oh, uh, okay yeah <laughs> So that's also a lot of my role is networking and uh, meeting people and writing and speaking um, and trying to create a greater awareness around this concept of social tourism and the potential to have them do good at the same time. Wow. So when I look at the pictures and they're all beautiful and they're, they all look like they're having fun, you guys are having fun, but like behind the scenes, it's much harder. It's, there's a lot of challenges. There are lots of trust building that you have to do and not just with one community, but with a lot of communities. Mm -hmm. I mean, I have experience in just building trust in like a few and it's already super challenging. Yeah. So I'm interested to know about like the surprising things that you've learned um, now that you are like how many years into this? Yeah. Uh, well, five years in the Philippines five and about years. we've been running tours for two years. Yeah. And, and yeah so in the two that. years that you've been doing this, what are the things that you didn't expect but just kind of surprised you? Good or bad, just sure. share them. Okay, I guess on the on the positive side, I've been surprised at how many people are interested in the kind of experiences that we're creating. I guess we started out as a expecting that 80-90% of our market would be foreigners. Yeah. So people like me who want to experience the true Philippines, the real Philippines. And yet, I think we've met so many people along the way who are Filipinos who are saying, wow, I, I want a more meaningful journey. I want to do something the weekend which inspires me, which teaches me something, mm -hmm. whether it be a skill or whether it be values or something that's inspiring. Yeah. So that's been really surprising to me how actually most of our guests nowadays are Filipinos mm -hmm. and uh, people that maybe have nine to five jobs here in Makati uh, and yet really want to get inspired and want to broaden their horizons um, at the weekend. So that is perhaps one of the biggest so pleasant surprises yeah. that, that we've had. I guess on the sort of slightly more negative side, it's not really negative, it's just part of a learning experience. It, it is just realizing how far you have to go. How you, I, I constantly like feel that we've, we, yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay, that's an issue. Yeah, okay. yeah. Yeah, some of our, um, well, just the nature of the Philippines, isn't right. it? You look at somewhere on the map, you think that'll take a couple of hours and then oh, no. it's like five hours and the three biggest lie is that it's walking distance. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It yeah, is yeah, not. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so um, I guess beyond the, the literal distance to, to our communities, it's really um, that sense of you, you think you've cracked it, you think that you have 
a great experience or that, that you've arranged in the community. You think that the tours are going great. You, you, you think you've really, you've kind of almost made it yeah. in, a, in a particular region. And, 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 think, and, and then a challenge arises <laughs> uh, because it's really unpredictable and you're, yeah. and you're connecting people and working with people. So, give you an example. Uh, one of the communities we work with in Bahol, we thought, well, let me ask you this. What do you think is the most important thing a traveler, let's say from abroad, they're going to stay overnight in a right. Gaudlinger village? What's yeah. the most, you know, they love the inspiration and uh -huh. uh, etc. What would they prioritize? I'm going to get, guess, uh, water. Okay. And toilet. Yes, toilet. Okay, this yeah. This is our big one, good one. Yes. So, so the toilet, for example, <laughs> we realized, we, we invested. Yeah. We thought we had done our research. We're like, okay, people, they need a, you know, I guess they want a comfortable and they want a nice toilet. So we bought toilets for the entire community. Oh. And uh, so that our guests could, you know, poop in, um, <laughs> in, in relative comfort. Okay. Um, and then, of course, uh, you know, we had these bright smiles over our face and we had these group of like 15 people from, from um, abroad. That, and at about 11 o'clock at night, these two German um, girls, they came out and they had a really moody look on their face. And I was like, what's the problem? And they said, Tom, there's no toilet paper. And I was like, huh. damn it, of course there isn't because the community doesn't use toilet paper. Yeah. Um, and um, we had, we were in this community in Mali Bahok in the center of Bahol. There was nowhere we could get toilet paper at that time of night. And so we had to send someone to Tagbilaran, you know, and he came back about an hour and a half later with a few rolls of toilet paper yeah. because we had completely forgotten who do I blame for there not being toilet paper there? Of course, yeah. um, it's not it's not the community's fault because yeah. it was us. We didn't train the community properly. We didn't let them know that this was a priority for our guests to have toilet paper. So just little things like that are happening all the time. Like you think <laughs> you've you know you think you've cracked it. You think you're well prepared, and then it's a kind of a more raw form of tourism right yeah. and, and, and it's about real experiences and interactions and so uh, constantly learning from them and mm. uh, uh, don't worry guys if you ever go mad in the future uh, there should be toilet <laughs> paper we've learned that lesson the hard way but we learned it the hard that. way yeah 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 with a midnight trip to 7-eleven in Tagbiladan uh, but it, it's full of experiences yeah. and, and learning experiences like that and I think that's the same for our guests I mean mm. there are a lot of our destinations where you have nice comfortable accommodation but you know it won't always be as comfortable a trip as you might be used to. So yeah. you might sweat a bit more than you, you know, you might. It's uh, part of the experience. It's all part of the experience. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So you just, just enjoy it, I guess. Yeah. Because so, yeah. I, I think they kind of know what they're signing up for. But yeah. sometimes it's hard to really know 100% until you're there already. Yeah. So, but I'm looking forward to joining one of your trips. Yes. Yeah, yes, now that yes, you have yes. toilet paper. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> now that you have like a lot of communities you're working with, also very close to my heart. But I'm also curious because you're doing all of these different adventures with that matter. But do you ever plan to go into like some regular destinations for people as well? Oh yeah, we focus on what we're good at, which is the interactions in the community. Right. But whoever goes on one of our trips, you know, we'll ask them, okay, so yes, you want your adventure to matter, that's why you want to go mad, so to speak. But if you also want to go surfing, mm -hmm. then we can arrange that. So we work with other, we work with our partners to organize island hopping, yeah. snorkeling, surfing, whatever it might be. Yeah. So we're constantly looking at how can we just add value or create extra meaning to existing experiences. So we work with yeah, Gaukling in Paul, we right. work with communities in Negros, we work with communities in Anion, uh, all sorts of places. So you can go there and still do all of the stuff that you might normally want to do when you visit these places. We don't want you to miss out on that. You know, the Philippines is one of the most beautiful countries on earth. I know. And uh, I wouldn't want yeah. you to spend your entire time in one or two villages, of course not. But it's just looking at how can we how can we create extra meaning around yeah. that experience? And how can we connect you more to what I sincerely believe to be the very best thing about this country, which is the people, right? right? And especially those people that have so much to teach us, which are those that have mm -hmm. been left behind, I think, in the past. So, so that's our mission, is yeah. to connect you as a guest to experience the real Philippines, the very best of the Philippines, but of course, having fun along the way. You can have everything. Absolutely. So uh, I like ending things with like advice, yep. but this time I don't want you to give advice to other people. If you would give advice to Tom like five years ago, what would it be? Ooh, what would it be? Oh, I've got many. So five years ago, I just arrived in the Philippines, yeah. right? 
Yeah. And um, <laughs> a, a funny little story. I, I wanted to appear more Filipino back then. No, how? somebody Yeah, somebody called me a parachute journalist. He said, you're one of these guys. Aww. You come in the country. You don't really understand that country. And so I thought, okay, how can I prove my Filipino-ness? Yeah. So I bought a uh, barong Tagalog. <laughs> I showed up to my interview okay. wearing a barong. But I didn't realize at the time that you should wear an undergarment. <laughs> no yeah, way. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. So uh, I would tell I if you're going specifically five years ago, Cannot that was almost a five year that. anniversary to that rather embarrassing moment. So I would say, Tom, stick to yes, ditch the shirt and the tie, but but stick to t-shirts and <laughs> steer away from barongs as well. Yeah. Um, no, but what what would I really teach, or what what would I tell myself? I mean, I, I think about five years ago, extend it six years ago, before okay, I came yeah. to the Philippines, yeah. I just I knew at the time. Ever since I was at university, I knew what I wanted in life. Right, I knew the things I wanted. I wanted to be a writer. I wanted to travel the world, and I wanted to earn good money. It was only really about six years ago when I realized I was like, wow, I've actually managed to achieve quite a lot of this. I was writing these reports for these international magazines. I was spending time in, you know, Africa and then all of these fast emerging economies. And it was very exciting. And yet it was so devoid of any real meaning or purpose because, uh, you know, I knew back then what I wanted, but it was only once I had actually achieved some of that that I realized I had no real idea as to why I wanted it or I had no real sense of why which was driving me each day. So that's what I would tell myself you know the former the previous version of Tom is uh, really look at what it is that motivates you because just having a few superficial things like a nice condominium or a good paycheck sometimes I guess the nature of it is that you need to experience that to realize that it's not quite enough yeah. and it never will be enough so if I were somehow to be able to get into my mind during my 20s I would force that point home more than mm-hmm. anything I'd say look even today I'm a lot poorer than I than I than I used to be when I arrived in the Philippines I was in the 34th floor condominium after six months of volunteering for GK I was down to the 25th floor then when I was writing <laughs> the book I was down to the 12th floor within about a little over a year I was down we're now on the second floor okay, and I, there was yeah. a point where I was a bit worried I was gonna like end up you know under a bridge on Edsa or something like that oh right oh my gosh yeah. um, but, but, because well, fortunately I've been able to stabilize my I, I'm not going any hopefully any lower than the second floor but that's good okay <laughs> But I, I'm just so much more fulfilled today and I'm, I, I just love waking up every morning and knowing that what I'm doing, despite all of the challenges and many uncertainties, it's just exciting. And, and it's exciting to know that chance that if you're successful at what you do, you can really add value to other people's lives, not just to your own. That is more important than anything that I had before. So that is the point that I tried to sort of ram home to myself a few years before I came to this amazing country. <laughs> So you know what's even more exciting is that you can share that experience to more people. So right. how do people join Mad Travels? All right. So uh, you can check us out on uh, Facebook. you got to find it. Mad Travel underscore PH is our Instagram account. We have um, weekend trips uh, almost every weekend to the Aita tribe in Zambales. It's called Tribes and Treks. We organize loads of events at the Enchanted Farm, which is great, a really inspiring destination to learn about social enterprise. So we have something going on almost every weekend. So you don't have to go on a week long trip with us. You can really incorporate it into your, you know, your regular life. If you're here in, in, in Manila or, of course, some of our guests that come from a lot further afield and stay a bit longer. Uh, so, yeah, check out our Facebook or the website is madtravel.org. And yeah, drop us a line and let us know uh, when you when you're ready to go mad. Nice. So, what's your favorite destination, Tom? Favorite destination? Yeah. Oof. I guess I, well, uh, one would be the Enchanted Farm, because yeah. that's my kind of uh, spiritual home, if you like. That's where yeah. I get, get most of my inspiration from. But when I just want to completely disconnect, uh, probably Bantayan Island. Okay. I like to go there. I went there over New Year, and uh, I just... Um, I took a few books, I sat on the beach, oh, I, I had so limited internet, and there's some beautiful communities there as well. Hey, thanks for listening. So you spent a good few minutes of your life listening to us, and we would love to hear from you too. We are always looking for inspiring stories of people who are doing good from where they are. So we would love it if you could share these stories with us. Send us a message through Facebook or Instagram. You can find us by searching for In Good Company Podcast on Facebook or at In Good Company PH on Instagram. 
This podcast is brought to you by Mad Travel, Rags to Riches, and Things That Matter. Hosted by me, Reese Fernandez Ruiz, and Tom Graham. This podcast is edited by our awesome intern, Alani Pagulayan, with research and marketing done by Romana Santos, and music by Kevin McLeod. And of course, this podcast will not be possible without you, our listeners and advocates. We are in good company with you.